Oh, fish on already, guys. First cast. What have we got here? Doesn't feel like a grayling. It's digging deep, whatever it is. There you go guys, lovely brown trout. I'm not going to hold him up for the camera just because so they don't want you to do that here because it is a fly fishing uh, beat and they let us obviously let us kindly fish here so I'll, I'll just get him back if I can get the hook up in there. Yeah. Morning guys, Andy the Budget Angler here on a blustery day, a very special day today. I'm out um, for fishing one of the one of the probably Britain's most famous chalk streams. This is the River Test in Hampshire. Um, my mate Stuart's kindly arranged for a day out for us both. Um, and Stuart, you may remember from a video from all oh, way back in 2020, he, he um, organised a day for me out at Thornwood Springs Trout Fishery as well, where you can get some fantastic rud. But today I'm going to be trotting a, um, a proper chalk stream, not, you know, like a big one, not like the, the small ones that I'm used to up in Bedfordshire. Um, just trotting it with um, with a 13 foot rod, the centre pin and a float that, I have, um, that I've made myself. Um, Sorry, I'm just, I've just had a, um, a notification come up on my phone. I was trying to read it while I was talking to you. So that wasn't very professional, but I'm going to carry on regardless because this isn't a professional channel. Um, yeah, anyway, so yeah, we're out. At, um, this is, this is a, a day ticket fishery. Um, it's a fly fishing fishery um, predominantly. Obviously, in the closed season for, for trout, they open it up to course anglers, which is basically during the winter. They let a few anglers on. You've got a pre-book. Um, but yeah, really, really nice. Two and a half miles of, um, of quintessential Hampshire chalk stream. You can see it behind me there. Um, nice and wide. Um, not very deep at all. You'll get some, hopefully, some nice shots on the GoPro. You can have a look at the sort of places I'm fishing. I'll run, give a little rundown of the bait I'm using. Give a little rundown of the tackle. Just this is the usual for me, but slightly heavier than I would normally go because it's very windy today. We've got Storm Malik blustering through. Um, I'm hoping we're going to dodge the uh, the drizzle, although I can see one actually. I can. I don't know if that's coming out behind me there, but that's a that's a bank of drizzle sort of three quarters of a mile away just skirting across the top of some trees so um, fingers crossed we can avoid that so I'm just changing arms because I've got my backpack on and it does ache holding a phone up and talking um, I need to need to get it down the gym or something don't I um, anyway I'm waffling on because I'm, I'm excited to be here to be honest it's a, such a fantastic opportunity um, a massive thank you to Stuart for organizing this for me um, it's a long way for me um, to come and he's kindly he kindly arranged to uh, to sort me out a lift um, so yeah absolutely absolutely uh, chuffed a bit so so thanks for that Stuart um, and that really just leads me to get down to do some fishing and we can what we got to try and do is get the grail in and avoid the trout <laughs> well, that's not a grayling. <laughs> it's a good trout, though. <laughs> oh.
Oh, it's a it's a rainbow, I think. Oh no, brownie. Oh no, it's a a rainbow. Oh, look at that, guys. He's got a got like a wound on him there. It's a real battered up old uh, rainbow there. Absolutely crazy looking thing. I think he's been attacked by. It looks like a cormorant's come down on top of him there and ripped his ripped his side. But he's still feeding well. Well, fish on guys and I suspect it's another trout well it's not going on yes it is no it's a grayling I don't believe it Well, there you go guys look at that a very lively little grayling in the sunshine that's the first one i've ever caught new species for me absolutely chuffed a bit scott he's really powerful and muscular Oh, another good fish, probably a trout. I should say so with a leap like that. I don't know if you can see anything in the glare because I certainly can't. Yeah. Oh, I don't believe it. He's just seen me, he's gone tearing off. Look at that go. <laughs> I don't know if that came out, I've never seen anything like it. I've never ever caught trout when they've got so much water to um, to swim around in. So uh, yeah. God, they really pull in the fast flowing water. I don't think it's especially large. Oh my goodness. Another lovely rainbow just in the side of the mouth there. Look at that, what a cracking fish. They go like a torpedo, don't they? When they've got so much water to swim around in. 
Look and let him sit. Well, guys, we're getting there, getting a bit of sport, plagued by trout, as is sort of the new theme to my video. Sorry about it if you're getting a bit of wind on the microphone. Uh, Storm Malik is blowing through. We're getting the sort of the, 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 the tail end of it as it sort of sweeps across the south of the country, but fingers crossed it won't rain. Um, but it is going to get a little bit breezy, sort of, you know, winds are 25 to 30 with gusts up to 35 or something like that. It was said on the Met Office app. Um, so, a yeah, bit chat, bit. A bit of a challenge for conditions but um, I think we'll get there uh, I've got the 13 foot um, rod which is obviously new for me which you would have seen last week uh, last weekend when I was testing it out and got that pike so we're gonna um, I'll give you a little rundown on the float and that it's obviously one I've made myself but I'm gonna gonna crack on uh, get fish in this little feeder stream see if I can get a um, grail in and just before I go I just want to give a shout out to Iggy he uh, watches the channel he's here fishing with his dad and he came and said hello so I hope you're catching well mate and uh, thanks for watching the channel fish on <laughs> I was just sorting out a um, snag in the line and I had to float right on my feet there oh that's funny oh, they are they absolutely give no quarter do they they are cool blimey Oh, he's off. Right, guys, I'll just took you through the gear I'm using. Um, obviously, I'll go do the reel first because I always use this reel. It's this damn quick shadow centre pin. Um, this is obviously the river test in Hampshire is kind of like the quintessential um, place you might use a centre pin for trotting. Um, it's the 13 foot, the Advanta X5 um, float. Um, got it last week coping admirably with the um with the trout i mean i think it was 40 45 or 40 i can't remember how much it is i'll put a link to it anyway but it's an angling direct brand um but yeah i mean it's, it's doing all right for an entry level float rod if you don't want to spend the fortune and you're not you know and i mean if you're careful with it i, I think it'll be fine i don't know i mean i don't know how rugged it is yet but that remains to be seen the, the eyes um the, the first three eyes have got Th uh, sort of two legs and feet and then the other ones are just just two which is the same as my 11 foot and that's done me well um float wise it's uh, one i made myself um i'm not sure about the white i think that might the white might be putting the fish off a bit it's quite bright and i do wonder if that might spook them so i think maybe i'm going to start painting them up for this sort of thing especially when it's well fished like this um but it's a peacock quill with a balsa body black whipping snip safety pin and painted pink in its stick configuration with two um two float rubbers there um hopefully you, you can hear me over the wind then just um something which i don't often use is a little olivet there's a four gram olivet and that's um basically just watching videos and advice from Stuart who, who um, arranged the day as well he said um, if you get in the sort of the bigger trout they will ping the shot off if, if they shake their head so that's to prevent that and obviously it just gives you a, a nice simple way of setting it up so that's just a four gram Olivet and I've used two float stops some people don't put one at the top but I have done just because I wanted one just in case the float rubbers were slipping or something as well and it just gives you another another float stop on the line down to a swivel something else I don't often use because it's a big fast flowing river and I'm fishing long trots as I retrieve if you've got two maggots they can act like a propeller and spin and so that's just to prevent tangling and then down to a barbless size 16 and I've been fishing maggot and corn I think all the fish you've seen me on catch on camera have come on corn which surprises me because corn's not my favorite bait but um yeah what can I say it's, it's working here so I'm not going to knock it um the rules here you're not allowed to use any tinned meat so I mean there are some chub in here and they're carp and barbel so um people might lean towards that but that is a rule of the fishery that you can't use them um Stuart is out he's fishing the tip or was when I last saw him he's um a little while a little way downstream um 
and I, I've got about two and a half miles I can fish here um, and obviously the 13 the reason behind the 13 foot rod is because it's a bit wider it just gives you that little bit more height to lift the line off the water so if you're fishing a run that's going at a slightly different speed to the water in front of you be it faster or slower you can take the line off the water and stop it affecting the float um, or use it as a break and stuff like that you know it just gives you that gives you that little little option and I'm, I'm really enjoying it and there are no trees here it's a fly fishing beach they do keep it relatively tree free but I don't know if you can see there are three floats hanging in that tree they're two sort of they look like pole floats to me so I guess someone's been trotting with them and then there's a um, there's like a round thing there which I think might be a fly fishing bobber so <laughs> Someone's um, yeah lost a bit of gear in there, and the two pole floats look the same. One's yellow and one's orange. So I don't know if that's the same person. Both their both their nice new fl pole floats. They probably bought them um, for the day and lost them both. But who knows? And they look well faded. So they've probably been up there a, a, a year, if not more. Um, anyway, I'm waffling on, and I'm going to have another cast, try and get some fish. Oh, what? <laughs> what have we got here? Well guys, it's a tiny little brown trout, I think. Oh, that's a little bit better. God, they go absolutely mad, don't they? I mean, <laughs> they got so much water as well. It's, it's a different ball game fishing a big river like this compared to my little chalk streams I'm used to. Um, great fun though, although the last one bumped me off, so I've got to be a bit careful. I don't want to lose it. I think it's a trout, although it's not flipping about. But it probably is. Yeah. There you go, now he is. Oh, not ready yet, come on. Oh, dang. That was me trying to be a bit eager with him. Right guys, just talk you through the bait I'm using. Um, I, I never, I always neglect to do this on my videos, so um, I'm trying to be a bit more coherent. Um, sort of the holy trinity for me really, bread, sweet corn, and uh, maggots. They were supposed to be red, white, and bronze, but the bronze ones, the, the sort of they've turned the white ones bronze as well. So it's sort of dark bronze, light bronze, and red. Um, and the ground bait there, that's a, a blended up loaf of bread um, put through the blitzer. Like I some people call it liquidized, but it's not liquid. Um, handful of sweet corn and like a bright yellow ground bait mix that I had. Um, I've had it for ages. I keep using it. People always sit in the video and comment, what is that you're using? Um, and I've just put a couple of handfuls in moistened just to kind of complement the sweet corn, just to add a bit of a yellow colour. And all the fish have come on corn, so um, I don't know if that's doing the trick, but it certainly uh, certainly boosts my confidence and I think that's half the half the job in fishing anyway. Um, and obviously white sliced bread um, can't go wrong. Although I haven't had any fish on it today, which is unusual for me, but as the corn's working, I've been using Well, whatever this was, it was a really shy, finicky little bite. So I'm hoping it's a grayling, although it's wiggling around, so it's probably a trout. Yeah, of course it is. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how I did that. I'm losing it guys, I'll tell you, I stayed up late listening to the cricket. There you go, it's definitely in the net. Did, did you see if that went in the net or not? Or did I just look away and it jumped out? Oh. Lovely pristine rainbow there guys, although it's just got a slightly damaged fin, they're absolutely cracking. He's got really sharp teeth, he just nicked my thumb. Bread, first fish on bread, I wonder what we've got here. Mm. Trout. Oh, 
Yeah, nice, the old bit, good bit of power in the 13 foot rod. That is, um, yeah, it's, it's got a good bend on it. It's quite a forgiving tip, but sort of lower down the blank, it's, yeah, you can, you can bend into the fish. Um, and obviously using your thumb as the brake on the centre pin, which has become a second nature to me now. Um, when I first started fishing with it, I remember I caught a carp in one of the videos and it was really sort of quite, quite nerve wracking um, on the light gear, but now it's kind of like, um, yeah, it's almost become part of my part of me. You know, you just use the thumb, just look, just you know, just slipping off and and releasing. It's um, it's, a, it's a, such a fantastic tactile way. I mean, I, this trout is digging hard. I mean, he's not very big. Um, I just don't want to rush him because I've lost a couple, obviously, as you've seen. Um, I'm just gonna get him up. Actually, that might not be a trout. That might be a big grayling. It probably isn't. But I felt like it had a big dorsal fin. Oh God, if that's a grayling, I'm gonna be on cloud nine. I don't wanna get my hopes up though. <laughs> so anyone, I'm standing and talking to the camera, there's no one around. If someone wanders up, they're gonna think, who is he talking to? Oh, God, he's digging, whatever it is. Really holding bottom. Oh, come on. Doesn't look like it's very fast flowing, but there's a good bit of pace in this river. The, the float's trotting along quick enough. So I think, uh, oh. oh, it is a trout after all that. Oh. Well, there you go. A naughty out of season trout, but he is cracking fun. I mean, look at him go. Oh, come on. So I've got six, I've got six, five, 5.8 pound line I think on on the real main line and then down to a four pound hook link and we've got a size 16 barbless on just so you know what I'm fighting with the eyes oh, ready now I can't walk no maybe he's not he's seen me he's seen me I think it's not the budget angler Oh, that is a that is a cracking trout. I don't know if you can see that there, guys. That is a that is a beauty. That's one of the biggest trout I've ever seen. Oh, this one was on corn. I fear it's another trout. Not as big, or it's coming my way, whichever way. Oh, it's a grayling, yes! Oh, the corn's done the trick yet again. What a stunning little fish they are, absolutely cracking little thing. Look at his little mouth, they're beautiful, they're absolutely beautiful. This is the second one I've ever caught in my entire life and I'm chuffed to bits with that. What a beautiful specimen of a fish, they're lovely. Something little. I went on to a. I've gone. I've moved. I was getting absolutely plagued by trout. It was a trout of chuck. So I've come down here where it's much shallower, and you've got this island in front of me. And I've just fished just a single red maggot just to see see what it would bring. And we've got something tid. Oh, it's come off. Oh no, it hasn't. Oh. Oh no. It's a tiny weeding grayling, guys. How cool is that? Well, guys, I don't know what it is, but you won't believe what I hooked it on. It was a piece of uh, barbecue chicken, believe it or not. It fell out of my sandwich and I thought, why not? Why not? It was like a, it was like a slither. Probably, I don't know, 10 mil long and two mil wide. So it could have looked a bit like a maggot. question is what is the fish it's a trout what a surprise they like chicken
there you go guys get a look at him in the net absolutely cracking rainbow trout there it's a real chunky fish as well lovely well guys what a session that turned out to be it's the next day now i'm out of my own little local chalk stream which is more of a trickle than uh than the majestic test in hampshire but um having some fun anyway but yeah absolutely blown away um with that fishing in that session that was absolutely fantastic i mean it's Sometimes it's just a pleasure to fish, but really it was a privilege and a pleasure um, to fish there. Those grayling were absolutely fantastic. I'm chuffed a bit, so I got my first grayling. Um, only three, and one of them was absolutely minute, but I'll take it, and it's something to build on. Um, I've, I've got, um, got some tips on a few places where I might get some grayling nearer to where I live, although they're not, um, you know, they're not stocked or anything like that. It's just, uh, just ones that, that live there. So um, as ever with my fishing, there's always, you know, there's always a chance. So I'm going to give that a go, maybe target that. Uh, this winter before the season closes because we've only got i think something like seven weeks before the uh before the end of the season when i'm filming this so um yeah it's gonna it's gonna absolutely sneak up in no no time but um there's a few places where i'm allowed to fly fish for trout in the closed season and i know there are a few trout around so uh, that might might give me something to do um i do love river fishing although Obviously, I've got um, got plenty of still waters that I'll be able to fish during the closed season, so uh, don't worry about that. There'll be plenty of videos. Um, just just say another thank you to Stuart um, who arranged the trip to the test and also for the uh, for the lift. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so, oh my God, hang on. Sorry about that, guys. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that was a little trout. I haven't had a bite for ages, and I just thought, well, I'll film the outro to last week's video. I'm, I'm looking at the tip, and I haven't even cast out. It's just, just resting there in the rest um, after that trout. But um, so yeah, I, um, I the rod nearly folded, and I'm, I'm, I'm filming it. It's on the GoPro, so you'll be able to see that trout on next week's video. But here's a little picture of it now. Um, I think I was just saying thank you to Stuart. So thanks again, mate. And um, yeah, a fantastic day on the test. I can highly recommend it um, if you're down that way. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. It is pre-booking and it's not not the cheapest it was 30 quid for a day ticket so it's not budget angling i couldn't afford to do it week in week out but for a treat it was well worth it and i really really enjoyed it so hopefully you've enjoyed it as much as i enjoyed making it um if you have done please hit that thumbs up um it would be much obliged if you could drop me a sub and i will catch you guys the next one cheers guys fish on